Hi, everybody. Welcome to Living in Arizona with your host, Natasha Tomlinson. No, it's not. I should be able to get that with ease. Uh, how are you today? I'm doing great. Thank you. How about yourself? Excellent. I cannot complain as I travel abroad and see the world and see the sights. I am uh, living the life. Which, awesome. It certainly sounds like it. Well, you know, I talk about this and you definitely live your life like this. Today is the only day that we have. You're a big believer in going out and hiking and doing things and being, you're very present. And for those of you who don't follow her, follow her on social media at Natasha Tomlinson. Um, you're a very present person. Like you sort of take in as much of the day as possible. I, I do. I wasn't always that way, but, but yes, I, I certainly do try to do that. We know, we know we have this time right now, so let's make the most of it. I agree. I agree. So many people post uh, ridiculous memes about today's the day, seize the day, start the diet today. You actually have to take the action. Yes. Uh, yeah. Which for yeah. me was well, a big well, deal. Well, I'm one of those people. I can probably sit and plan for anything, but uh, until you actually take action, you'll never actually realize what the difference is. Absolutely. And all the fears go out the window. Oh, I'll never be able to work. I won't be able to work with my clients. I won't be able to. You're wrong. You're wrong. You're wrong. Everything works out. So the thing go. is, you, once you're taking action, it's like you don't have time to think about all that other stuff because you're so focused on what you're doing. So the rest of it just kind of, go, I mean, it's, I guess it's still there in the backgrounds, but you just, your focus has changed. Uh, certainly it is for me and everything stays exactly the same, except my locations have changed, which <laughs> I, I guess is a good thing. And I got to so see. where has the winds taken you today, Lee? I'm in Las Vegas. It's time for Super Woo! Bowl. It's time for Hi. Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. uh, I posted this on so social media uh, all over the place. Uh, everybody asked me, what does it look like in Las Vegas? And it was a picture of me in a very empty downtown yesterday afternoon. Wow. To I can't I imagine. I was I there last year. Well, no, I guess it wasn't last year. It was 2018, November right. 2018 for a wedding. And uh, that certainly wasn't the case. So I, it's hard to imagine Vegas empty. This is the busiest weekend of the year. And uh, to 2018, it averaged over 300,000 people visiting the Las Vegas area. And I don't think uh, it's going to get much better this weekend. But hey, you know, people are coming in. I'll watch football. I'll figure it out. It's all good. Golf courses well, are still open. Well, there you go. And speaking of golf, I mean, we have the Waste Management Open that I believe teed off today, which is usually a huge event with huge populations. And, well, not this year. It's been significantly reduced. There are some people that are still attending, but I, I think the uh, the attendance is down like 80%. It's, yes. it's huge. Everything is down. Mm-hmm. Oh, well. Yeah. Well, let's yeah. talk about a positive note. Let's okay. say that I wish to invest in Arizona this time around, okay? I'm thinking uh -huh. of picking up a rental property uh, so that I have additional income. Shouldn't be a big deal. A lot of people mm -hmm. are into it. Yes. Um, certainly, let's start with the overview. Um, what should I look for just on a state, local level? To get started well the first I would ask you is are you interested in more of a uh, a long-term rental for for people 12 12 months six months rentals or are you more interested in having a vacation rental type business because they're they're uh, a different setup and they're um there are different laws coming down the pike for for each of those as as we uh have this COVID environment and so we'll see how all of that plays plays out especially on the short-term rental side um but i guess you always begin with the end in mind so what what would be your long-term goal would be my my first question for you what's the purpose of this of this investment vehicle well i guess it starts with the first basic question scottsdale phoenix glendale the general vicinity are there before I start to get into the business of buying those or getting into those or rent to rent back, mm -hmm. do those properties exist? They do exist. They do exist. In this market, um, 
if you are a buyer, you definitely have to be tenacious. Uh, that's for, that's for sure. Um, but the rental market is also hot as well. Um, it is uh, in the favor of the landlords as far as supply is, is concerned, and the rents are rising. They have been uh, steadily rising for the past couple of years now. And, um, and, and, and landlords are still taking advantage. That, that would be on the, the single unit side. Um, as far as the multifamily side, I mean, we have a number of multifamilies being built all over, all over town. And uh, that's because of the number of people we have moving here and the jobs that are proposed to come here. Okay, so I, you, mm -hmm. I call you up, you drive me around, we visit all the multi-units that are available. What's the first thing I need to take care of in uh, regard to the property and resolving problems or things that I see about it? Well, I would always su suggest that you have an inspection of the property because uh, you don't want to have issues down the pike for your tenant. You want to know what uh, what the con general condition of the property is and what expenses you have today and, and down the road. So that would be um, a strong suggestion on my, on my part. Okay. So to make sure that all the major components of the, of the home are uh, looked at and if there is a concern, a problem with condition that they're fixed because uh, you don't want a, a landlord-tenant dispute um, about condition. I have an eye for construction. So at what point should I start to really start looking at bids for rehab and comparisons on that level? Um, I usually take a look at that if we're, we're in a purchase together. I usually throw that out during the inspection period so you have a full idea of what the potential costs are um, while you acquire this property. Um, if not, then if you have this property before and it's sitting vacant, then definitely before you have a tenant put in place. Okay, good advice. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see, what else do I need to look at? Insurances, okay, since I don't know this at all, what is insuring a property like this like? Well, the your property insurance for a rental property, whether it's long-term rental or vacation rental uh, will be a little more expensive than say if it were your pri primary residence. So you definitely have to um, investigate those, those costs and make sure you have the proper coverages. Um, what it will not cover is the contents for the tenants, the tenant's personal property. So I strongly suggest uh, that in the lease, you have the tenant uh, carry rental property as a, as a requirement of, of, uh, using the property. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. As I look to take over the property, um, self-managed as compared to professional management? Well, the, the main question is, are you going to be here and are you going to be more of a hands-on manager? A lot of people um, have onesies and twosies, one property, two, two property, they're, they're part-time, they're semi-retired, and this is their thing, and they decide that they want to be involved um, with the process, and they prefer to self-manage. Um, if you're doing it from a distance, though, I feel that would be problematic, um, and it's, in your, it's probably in your best interest to hire a property management company, which uh, I would be happy to refer you to some phenomenal property management companies around town. Yeah, because I personally, I'm not in the leasing and renting business, so I wouldn't know about lease agreements per se or things of that nature. Um, efficient rents collection, taking care of paperwork, God knows. I mean, I only look at things from, uh, if I, when I invest, I only look at things from a purchase and, uh, point of view. And generally, when you pay all cash, you don't have to worry about much of anything, but when you're talking about turning these things around into rentals, I mean, how crucial are these aspects? I, I would say they're pretty crucial, especially today. Um, the coronavirus has definitely turned everything a little topsy-turvy uh, with these eviction and foreclosure moratoriums, and you definitely want someone who is well-versed on that as they continue to change um, and is keeping uh, themselves well-informed um, on those on those topics to keep your property safe and to uh, keep the cash flow coming in your direction. Well, if I was someone who leveraged, hypothetically, 
and I was buying uh, buying the property based on a loan. First of all, are there loans for this kind of purchase? I don't even know if this exists. Yes, yes, there are. Um, I, I know a lot of people who purchase vacation rentals became very popular here um, a few years ago, maybe three, four years ago where our governor made an open statement how he was a welcoming to Airbnb in the vacation rental industry. And that sent a flood of people in our direction um, who decided that, that they wanted Arizona to be the place where they retired, but they weren't quite ready for retirement yet. So they would purchase a property now and probably five to six months out of the year, they would uh, rent the property out as a vacation rental. And because of what the rental rates are, they cover their expenses for the, for the year. Also at the time, uh, the requirement for a down payment on a second home purchase versus an investment property was probably half. So on a second home purchase, you're looking at a 10% down, down um, requirement typically. On an investment purchase, uh, you are looking at 20, 25% minimum, depending on whether that is uh, a, a single family, single unit, or a multiple, a multiple dwelling that you're not residing in. Uh, let's talk about some of the tax, tax implications of purchasing these types of property. I'm aware of property tax, um, but utility taxes, landlord's insurance, uh, mortgage interest, HOA's fees, um, ties that are directly tied to the repair. I mean, when we're talking about taxes on all of this stuff, how much should I prepare for? I would think, well, there, we have a rental tax and every city is a little bit different as to what they charge. And uh, it's customary for that to be passed on to the tenants, especially in today's market. Um, outside of that, I would really suggest that you speak to your tax professional, your CPA, so they can see a full picture of what your finances look, look like and any other assets that you may have um, to assess what your tax uh, burden would, would be. But um, you'd be able to, to deduct any uh, management fees, any repairs, utilities, HOA costs uh, that were associated with the, with the property, which should all be accounted for um, in order to maintain ca cash flow. But, but those, your CPA would want to know those figures. Uh, with all that said, if somebody is interested, how do they get a uh, hold of you to discuss investment properties? Certainly. Well, you can feel free to reach me at the number above, the 480-203-4364. Visit my website or send me a message on any of the uh, social, more popular social media plat platforms. Or click the button. If you're watching this, there's probably a message link attached to it. I'm going to switch gears and give you stuff that you're not prepared for. Uh-oh. Uh, I know. It's my job uh, running the show. I have my coffee today, so good. let's good. go. Good, All right. We are talking about purchasing for the purposes of rental. Let's change gears and do renting versus buying. This is a question I'm sure you get a lot yes. um, in your market, right? With prices going up in certain cities and some prices going down in other cities, Let's talk renting versus buying. So I come to you. I'm ready to purchase. How do I decide if I'm renting or buying? What is the first thing I want to look at? Well, I guess the question is, how long are you planning on staying in this? In this, if you're already transient and if your your position requires you to do a lot of travel, which you know is up for debate um, with recent you know COVID. Um, Developments. That would be my question for you. You know, how, what is it that you're looking for in a property? Um, are you, is the school system, the work to, to life commute to you? What's important um, to you would be really question number, number one. Take a look at what your rents are and the rents are certainly rising and have done so and how much you've paid in rent over, you know, the last couple of years and what you could have paid and what you could have benefited from had you purchased during that time. And if you're willing to continue paying someone else's mortgage or you're ready to pay your own. Okay. The second step, I would assume in this process, once I make that determination, right, what is my bottom line? Mm -hmm. um, even if I'm renting, is it important to talk to um, a mortgage professional and let them run the numbers one way or the other? 
Yes, yes, there are. And I'm sure people are being hit in every direction. Um, I speak to different clients that uh, there's a, a lot of text messages and, and uh, voicemail drops and things that are, that are taking place enticing people to buy. But it is important to either over the internet or by phone or in person if you can to actually sit down with someone and go over your finances, have your credit run, um, have them look over your, your financials, whether it's your, your pay stubs, W-2s, your tax returns, and determine what your buying power is, so how much you qualify for, and then what is within your budget. You may qualify for a million dollars, but that may not make sense for you and at this particular time in your life, and, um, and see what you can, you can get with that, with that money. With all that said, so now I have a monthly figure in mind. The numbers line up. Uh, I would think that I'd want to look at a rental at the same price my mortgage payment would be to look at what the bang for the buck looks like side by side in Scottsdale or Phoenix or any of those locations. Um, What is your recommendation? Should I look at one of each and say, let's say I can afford, let's be realistic, $2,500 a month. Um, am I going to get more bang for the buck on the rental side or am I getting more bang for the buck on the purchase side? I would definitely say you're getting more bang for the buck on the purchase side. What? Um, yes. Yes. The, the rental rates have, have increased, especially when you account for the short-term rentals, trying to find a rental, say this time of year. Huh? Good luck. <laughs> good, good luck. Uh, uh, people sign up for the vacation rentals and things a, a year in advance. Um, there, it's 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 a very interesting time. <laughs> hmm. Sure. Mm-hmm. Okay, so I'm back into purchase mode. Uh, I do know this because of the limit of available properties. There's not a whole lot of room for. Um, let's talk about both. All right, let's start with. Okay. We'll start with leases. Let's say that okay. I prefer to lease a property. How hard is it to get something in sort of that sweet? Po- I would have to guess because it's going to be like where I am in San Diego. Anything okay. between fifteen hundred and twenty five hundred dollars a month is the hottest commodities on the market. And I'm okay. going to take a wild guess that the same is going to be uh, for you in uh, Arizona. So yeah. how do I make a lease that's more presentable? What is what is going to get me noticed as compared to everybody else? Um, well, if you're looking at a lease, I mean, they're going to run your credit. They're going to want to know what your ability is to, to pay long, long term. Um, I would say really just, um, just having a, a clean, clean financials, <laughs> which is saying, saying a lot, but, uh, I get that statement. I do because I've worked with people who are trying to rent and especially someone who's taken leads off of the internet on this topic. People Mm -hmm. are really in an unbelievably, uh, don't take this the wrong way, people, you don't know me, but it's extremely delusional to believe that you're going to rent or lease a property having never looked at your credit ever in Mm -hmm. some cases. Or my favorite line, which when I've interviewed people who are renting, I have bad credit. How does that work? Uh, right. Can you talk about this for a minute? Because I'm sure there are properties that people can rent with bad credit or no credit or a bankruptcy. However, yeah, and, and there are. Yeah, you there need are. To lower your you expectations, always... I would imagine. Agreed. Absolutely. You absolutely have to lower lower your expectations if you have poor rental history, if you have um, a, uh, what what I'm calling a, a blemish, an oopsie or something um, on your financials in the, in the past, uh, what that, that you have to be willing to give up something if you, so that may be increased rent, um, increased deposits, um, or, or the property itself may not be all that you wanted. But you have to understand that this is a stepping stone to get you in the direction that you, that you want to go. Um, and, uh, and, and it's necessary. Otherwise you're just going to stay in the position that you're in right now. Um, it's necessary to clean up, to clean up these things. And yeah, uh, 
you, whatever happens to cause these uh, financial issues, a lot of times are tied to painful things in our past, right? Uh, tied to divorces or breakups or some decision that you made that you probably wouldn't make today, but it was a purchase that you didn't have the knowledge that you did, did today. But it doesn't matter. You still, you still have to pay for it. <laughs> you know, it still has to be dealt with in one, in one way or another. And the sooner you do that, the better. Okay, let's switch gears over to the buying side. Mm -hmm. Limited inventory happening right now. What makes an offer more appealing? I mean, I'm not sure if you saw my post earlier earlier in the week. Um, my clients and I had a two o'clock showing appointment. We and 20 other people were in line for that two o'clock right. showing appointment. Right. It's, it's not... Um, we did not win the bid on that home, but we did win on another home. Um, what I would say is not to be afraid to be a backup offer because uh, some people, they get cold feet, um, their financing falls out of place, husband and wife can't agree on the purchase, and they back out during the inspection period, and then here you are next in line. Um, don't be afraid to have a you know, for, for me, I've, I've door knocked. I mean, there's properties that have uh, not sold in the past and those people may be interested in selling once they realize how much the market has improved. Um, and you just have to be a little bit, you have to think a little bit outside of the box um, with that. So that person, if they just had someone knocking their door, they're not going to move today, but they may move two, three months from now. So just be open, you know, be open to that. Um, another situation, maybe someone who has a, te has a tenant and that tenant's lease expires a couple months down the road, but they're, they don't want to be a landlord anymore, whatever their financial situation has changed. Um, so it's important to make contacts, several contacts with people who are uh, either off market, um, for sale by owners, wh whatever. You really have to leave no stone unturned to uh, find that property these days. Great information from a nationally recognized real estate professional. How can people get a hold of you? Again, you can feel free to give me a call, 480-203-4364. Click on one of the links, wherever they may be, and uh, feel free to touch base with me on social media as well. I look forward to chatting with you. We'll be back again with you next week and talk about living in Arizona. Thanks, everyone. Click subscribe. Awesome.